Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. My name is Brandon and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to uh, hook up your equipment from your camera to your ATM Mini Pro. And, uh, and basically I've done a video that's kind of like this before, but I kind of went into more detail about the, um, the descriptions of the equipment and different things like that. And this is more of how to attach what, kind of a workflow of uh, from camera all the way to the ATM Mini Pro. So hopefully this will help you out, but here we go. <clears throat> basically right here in front of me, um, I have a couple of things hooked up, but other than that, I have a big pile over here to my right and uh, of just wires and cables and different things that we need. And so uh, anyways, I've, I've got a couple of things plugged in just for time's sake. Uh, but basically we're going to be starting off with our camera. This is a Canon XA11. Uh, this is what we use in our main service and we have two of them. And, uh, and so we got that and we're going to go from here. We need to hook up our uh, cable to the ATM Mini Pro and uh, I have a uh, mini HDMI to HDMI and depending on your camera you may have regular HDMI, you may have SDI, you may have micro HDMI. Uh, for instance the camera that I'm actually recording this on is a um, Panasonic G7. It has micro HDMI. So uh, whatever cable you need but you're going to go from your camera and you're going to plug in to your ATM Mini Pro uh, I'm putting it under channel one for this. And there you go. Uh, so you have that first part hooked up uh, if that's a small setup. Uh, now, if you have a bigger setup, in other words, you have your camera and it's further away from your ATM Mini Pro, what you would do is you would take this and you would hook it into um, your HDMI to SDI. Uh, so you'd get this little Blackmagic converter. It's, uh, it's Blackmagic HDMI to SDI and you would plug it in to there and then you would get your SDI cable and go from SDI out which it has two of them on there and then you would go to the next cable which is or the next adapter which is SDI to HDMI. Now you can use HDMI cables but what I usually tell people is uh, 50 feet you're okay with HDMI um, straight just make sure that you put the cord going the right direction because um, they have boosters on some of them and so you'll want to look on the tip of it let me get one real quick usually right here towards the end it'll say uh, to source or to TV and uh, and different things like that so make sure you have those going the right way or it won't work but anyways okay so we go back to this if you got a long run and your camera's not close to your ATM Mini Pro, you're gonna go camera to mini HDMI uh, to HDMI cable, and it plugs into the HDI to SDI. And then from HDMI to SDI, you're gonna run the other side of that cable to SDI in. And so you have that. Now you can go like, I think 300 feet is what they say. Um, so, you know, you don't have to have your camera that close to your ATM Mini Pro if you don't want to. From there, you would hook in an HDMI cable into your ATM Mini Pro. Now, the thing about this is, this is all right here, obviously, but like I said, you can go 300 feet if you want to. So now we have the camera running into the ATM Mini Pro, but now we need to hook up the ATM Mini Pro to the monitor. And uh, what we'll do with that is, there it is. We're going to run HDMI out from here and we're going to go into our monitor. Now I already got my monitor plugged in uh, for time's sake like I said and we will plug it into here if I can get it. I'm struggling. Please hold. Alright, so we got that plugged in. Now, one thing dealing with your monitor, uh, what you want to do, if you can, try to have a monitor that has a headphone port out uh, because your ATM Mini Pro does not have one uh, for that. And so that way you can hear what's going to your live stream. So uh, just a cheap piece of, uh, cheap pair of uh, headphones. And uh, these are in pretty rough shape. We have gaffer tape on the top. That's how uh, sad it is right now. But anyways, uh, you can plug them into the back and so you'll hear a feed from there. Now, <clears throat> 
as far as microphones, um, if you are just recording during uh, during the week or something like that, you can run a camera straight into here. For instance, I'm using the Rode Wireless Go, and uh, for this recording right here, you could hook that into it. Um, I do have the extra um, Smart Plus Lavalier uh, microphone that goes with it, but you don't have to have that. But the Rode Wireless Go is a really good mic. Um, I just like the Lavalier uh, part because it's uh, it's a little less bassy. Uh, but you can plug in your mic or, or whatever input you want into the camera and it runs into here and you just got to change your settings on here or you can run a mic into the A2 Mini Pro. And, uh, and so let's say, for instance, you're running from your sound system into the A2 Mini Pro. What you want to do is, and this is just a little example, it's a small soundboard, uh, but basically even if it's a digital board, analog, whatever, you're going to uh, run from here into there and what you'll need is something like this. This is the Art DTI Dual Transformer uh, Isolator. And the thing with this, um, the thing with this is um, this kind of takes out some of the hum, the buzz, all that kind of stuff. And so it's pretty good. You could run in XLR, uh, you can run in quarter inch, you can run in RCA. Uh, and then you come out, you can go, even though you go in one way, you can come out the other way. And so you can go out XLR, RCA, um, sorry, RCA or quarter inch. And so uh, really good device right there. And so basically um, you would come out of your soundboard, say you have an, like an X32 or something like that, which is what we have. You would come out of your uh, XLR on the back and then you would plug into here. And then from here, you could switch it to RCA with this cable and go straight into your ATM Mini Pro. Because your ATM Mini Pro uh, has an input, but it is uh, an eighth inch. And so you would plug that into the back under mic one. Uh, now in the settings on your software, ATM uh, control software, you have to make sure that you have it set uh, mic or line, depending on which one you're using. Uh, if you're using a mic, obviously mic. If you're using a soundboard or something like that, you wanna put it on line or you're gonna have a lot of, uh, a lot of extra noise going on there. So uh, kind of to recap on the audio, you're coming out of your soundboard, regardless of digital, analog, whatever, um, and you're gonna go into the, the ART DTI and then come out of it and use like RCA to eighth inch. And so you have that kind of uh, set up right there. So that is the main part of that. Now, the next part, and I'm gonna go out of camera for just a second, is you have to get your um, ATM hooked into your network. Now, when you first set it up, you're gonna have to hook it up to your computer and uh, you have to, it has a USB-C on, on the output of it and you need to hook it up and, and do some settings and stuff like that. It's a little complicated, a little frustrating right at first. But after that, um, you're basically just gonna hook it up to your network. And uh, I have a network switch behind me uh, in our sound booth. And so I just ran a cable out of there and you would plug in uh, the cable into there. Now, one of the mistakes that uh, I've originally thought and, and kind of made and what have others have posted about is what we thought when it came out or what I thought is you would just hit go live on here and it would start live streaming to your Facebook or YouTube once you had all your settings put in. That's not the case. You still have to have a computer on your network um, plugged in and or not plugged into this, but on your network and you're gonna have to go to Facebook and uh, you're gonna go into your settings and stuff like that and you're gonna pull up a live or create a live, whatever it's called on there. And, uh, and from there, um, you, you're, you're, you're gonna control it all right there. Sorry, I can't talk today. Uh, you're gonna control it from all there. What you do is when you hit go live on here or on air, um, that's gonna release the feed from your camera to go to your Facebook feed, but it doesn't go live. You have to still hit go live on your computer. Uh, it doesn't have to be connected to this, but that's how you would do it. Um, another thing that, uh, that I just wanna mention is also is, so you don't have to have your computer hooked up to it, like I said, and if you have a external hard drive, if you wanna uh, record to that, you would basically go USB-C out into your external hard drive. Now I have an older one, this is a USB 3.0, so I just went to a store and bought a USB-C uh, to a USB 3.0 and plug it in and it'll record right there. 
So um, that is pretty much it on there. Uh, I did not test any of this when I was when I wasn't looking at it, so I was just making sure it was on there. Um, let me see if I can turn on the camera and see if we can get the feed to come through. All right. So yes, we got a feed coming through, and there's our lighting and camera and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's working, and I have audio coming through right there. So one thing that you need to to check uh, is uh, if you want to record. Uh, you come over here and you can hit record. It's the top right button uh, next to the corner. It only is the top right button and right beside it is record. And so if you hit record, um, you will see it kick in, hopefully in just a minute. Actually, I didn't plug it in. Just kidding. Uh, let's plug it in right there. All right, it's recognizing it. There it goes. All right, so now I'm recording. And uh, this is going straight into my external hard drive. The audio is showing up on there, and uh, you can change your settings on your ATM software to where you can have the audio meter up here, just like it would be on, uh, I'm gonna turn that a little bit so the light's not in it, but uh, just like it is on the ATM Studio HD, the 4K, all that kind of stuff. So you can have up to four inputs on here. It's pretty cool on there. And, uh, and go from there. Now, one of the things that uh, I see people make kind of mistakes on or they don't know about right at first is if your internet connection is not that great uh, and you have your own air, which is probably not gonna work right now because I haven't, it, it may work, I don't know, I haven't set it up in a while. Uh, but you see how it says on air and then it says um, that I'm running 7.17 on my data rate and it says okay on your cache. Well. If your internet signal's not strong, then one of the things that's gonna happen is it's gonna say, um, it's gonna keep trying to, to feed it all and it's, it's eventually gonna say cache is full. And uh, that doesn't mean you've done anything wrong, that just means your internet signal's not good enough. And so uh, that's kind of it on there. Uh, again, use some headphones, plug right out of there and you can hear exactly what's going in on your, your feed. Um, my experience, and I guess I'm not, I haven't done a lot of searching on it and stuff like that but your audio level you can control up and down on here and on the software um, you want it a little bit in the red but you obviously don't want it all the way up clipping every time uh, but it seems like it's a little low on the atms whenever uh, whenever you don't have it kind of touching the red and so um, and now you can kind of see the cache is at 50 percent uh, in other words i'm not getting good internet at this moment which i don't have anything else plugged in so um, it's trying to to hold up everything but um, it's eventually going to say cash is full on there. Um, and so anyways, that is pretty much it on there. I'm going to stop the recording on all of that. Kind of some features to do with the ATM Mini Pro. Uh, again, you have four different channels you can do. Um, you can also uh, control the audio off of those each channel. So if you're using a camera mic or a mic hooked up to the camera, um, then you can do it that way. You have two inputs back here. So if you wanted to do one from your soundboard, um, if it's a smaller church and, and you don't run everything through the soundboard, you could have one going through there and then you can have another one that's for um, just a separate mic, you know, whatever on there. Um, over here you have cut and auto. Cut uh, basically is just uh, switches the feed between one and whatever channel or, you know, whatever two channels you're using, you just hit cut. It's a flat, uh, a flat uh, switch. And then if you hit auto, it's kind of more of a fade. Uh, FTB is fade to black and uh and that's there you can also do picture in picture um, there's one church i set this up for um, they actually replaced they, they put the camera dead center and uh, and they actually replaced their projector screen in the back with a feed from their pro presenter and uh, and so in other words instead of seeing the projector in the back the projector screen and it being kind of faded uh, you know because obviously projectors don't work that great compared to led walls and all that kind of stuff uh, but let's just be real. If you got a, a LED wall, you're probably not dealing with the ATM Mini Pro. Um, you probably got something a lot better. But uh, what you would do is, is you would basically just do picture in picture. And on here, it's got four different options where you can do uh, all four corners. Um, or you can go into your settings on your ATM software and you can actually adjust it over and you can put it directly over your projector screen. So it looks a lot brighter for your home audience. Um, you know, some people do that, some people don't. We don't do it here at our church. Um, you know, if I wanted to flip between them, I would just do a full screen of the projector or the per presenter, and then I would do the other. So anyways, I know this is kind of a quick rundown. Hopefully it made sense. Uh, just to kind of recap really, really fast to help you, because I don't want to overwhelm you. Um, camera, 
mini HDMI to HDMI cable, and you can either go straight into your ATM Mini Pro, or if you need a longer run, you would use an SDI cable. To do that, you would do a Blackmagic uh, HDMI to SDI uh, box, and then you would go SDI cable to the SDI to HDMI. And uh, there's links in all of the video, uh, in all the descriptions for this, um, and then you would go to HDMI to there. Um, I know this can be kind of overwhelming sometimes, so if you have any questions, feel free to comment. I try to respond as much as I can, um, but it's a, a very easy way to live stream. Um, if you can't afford Resi uh, and you're a small church, and I totally get it, um, this is probably the next best thing uh, because it's all right here. And uh, there's a reason why when they first came out, they were uh, back ordered like nobody's business. And so uh, pretty good little uh, device, not perfect. It, I really wish it had a headphone out on there uh, and maybe another HDMI out because <clears throat> here's another thing. Uh, so you can do an HDMI out and have this, but... Um, if you want uh, to have, say, a feed go to your nursery or foyer or whatever, then what you would have to do is you would have to give up this. <coughs> now, it's not necessary to have this, but it is beneficial to have this because you can see what all your channels look like. Uh, like if you have three other cameras and a computer, you can see what's going on. Um, but if you wanted to run a feed out to uh, your nursery or foyer or whatever, you can only have the main program feed out. And, uh, and so that's not the greatest thing. Uh, so that, that's the two things that really are the only cons for me off of this. Um, other than that, it's, it's a really good device. I just wish it had the HDMI out, an extra HDMI out that you could separate, and then also a headphone out. But... Uh, anyways, it's a great item uh, other, other than that, and so hopefully this helps you. If you have any questions, feel free to comment, and uh, if you need to purchase any of the items, please use those links. Those help me, and I would greatly appreciate it. Also, please like and subscribe. Uh, one of the things that we are trying to do by April, uh, the beginning of April, is to get 1,000 subscribers uh, and also 4,000 hours viewed, and so I'd greatly appreciate that. That would help benefit uh, the calls a little bit here. Uh, but hopefully you have a great week, and uh, hopefully your new year has started off great. Uh, feel free to let us know if you need anything. Thanks.